Hey boys and girls, it's Nightstalker here, and welcome along today to my Pike Militia tutorial, or as I prefer to call them, the Poke Militia, because that's what they're really good at, poking stuff with sharp sticks and poking holes in them till they leak. Let's check out, first of all, a little word from our sponsors. So boys and girls, something I want to talk to you about, and it's exciting, is that I've just joined the content creator program for Conqueror's Blade. Um, and that gives me all sorts of advantages and heads up and lots of cool things that I can share with you uh, Especially if you want to join the discord server. Um, you'll find it in the uh, video description below. You can join the discord server with us and See all these new things as they're available to me I'll make them available to you and also if you're struggling in game with anything you need help Please also join the discord server and we'd be lovely uh, lovely lovely people there would love to help you out now one of the things about joining the content creator program is that I get these on screen here. I get these absolutely lovely packs that are made available to the people who follow me or subscribe to me. And these are only available through the, the content creator program. So if you want to buy these on the My Games Marketplace, feel free. It will always ask you for your content creator code, which is Nightstalker, right there at the bottom of the screen. So if you would like to purchase these packs, here's a quick demonstration of what each of them look like. Very lovely. Lovely, lovely attires. Anyway, that's all the message from our sponsors. Let's get back on talking about the Poke Militia. Okay, boys and girls, here we go with the Pike Militia. Now, the thing to remember about Pike Militia is they have two viable formations and one ability. I'll just bring out my little cursor here. We have the column formation, which is the formation they're in right now. We have the line formation, which is this one, also very useful. They do have a dispersed formation as well, but it's just not viable. It doesn't even really save you from artillery because they still sort of bunch up, as you can see there. So... Really, they have two viable formations, F2 and F3. Let's go find out what happens when we use these formations. Okay, so the first formation we're going to talk about is the line formation. And this is good for blocking off, uh, I don't know, corridors, things like that. Anything that's too wide for their, their first formation, their primary formation, which is the column formation. So as you'll see here, when the, uh, they are attacking, they have a little stun, and that's because these are elite pike militia, and that is one of their veterancy lines. We'll talk about that soon. As you can see, very, very effective. Almost no damage taken. Let's talk about the column formation now. Get into position. The problem with having this column formation out in the open like this, like you can see in the training room, is that they can be flanked around both sides, which is not good. Let's see what happens if we just let this happen and do nothing. You see how some of the guys on the side turn around and try to strike on the angle? That's not so for all of them. And it kind of seems to be random when that happens. But as you can see, anyone attacking from the sides is pretty much just going to get free hits on your unit. Press V once the main, main body of the troops has been killed, just to finish off what's going on. Alrighty, so being a longsword, we don't need to send them back. Now, the number one ability is the primary ability of the Pike Militia. And the idea is that you smash the Pike Militia into the unit of, of enemies, like so. And then you hit one. You delete everything in range, and then you do it again. You move, and you hit the one key again. And you move, and you hit the one key again. Now the thing about these Pike Militia is that they're very, very dangerous to absolutely any kind of unit. There are some exceptions, things like uh, Imperial Spears with their giant tower shields or any other tower shield, or uh, the Stalwarts are obviously extremely dangerous to, um, to the Pike Militia because they have a shield with a large amount of block and they will continue to do damage in the same way as Pike Militia do. Uh, Stalwarts are very effective used in the same way as the Pike Militia where you pile them in and hit the one key. They're actually power pike militia. So everything you learned today in the pike militia tutorial is actually completely transferable to the stalwarts. Let's have another go with this line formation. You'll notice here that we can actually use it. Silly thing needs to trigger. You can actually use the, the line formation to drop into the, the brace as well. And this is something a lot of people forget. Watch this. 
delete. And see how it deletes on a much wider front? It's very important to use the formation that is most appropriate to the area you're fighting in. In this open area like the training room, you'll see that it's much better to keep them in the line formation. But if you're fighting in corridors or doorways, it's going to change. I'll show you that now. Here come the infantry. It's going to take us a little while to get there. But we have a nice handy handy doorway that we're going to use to our maximum advantage. Here they come. Come on guys. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And you notice how they all have to bunch up through the doorway. So you move your polite militia in, you press the delete key, also known as 1, and that will delete the unit that you're fighting. Once they've killed the ones directly in front of them, move them in again so more can attack, and you'll have further deletions. Tidy up the unit by pressing V and allowing the unit to continue to attack on their own. Let's move on to something a little bit more advanced. Now something that we need to talk about when we're talking about pikes is how pikes do damage. Let's just observe as this unit walks onto us. What you'll notice is that they're doing plenty of damage at the very, very tippy top of the pike, at the head of the pike. And units that get in closer, such as this chap here, don't take as much damage. Did you notice the damage numbers? The reason for that is that all pikes do the most damage at the very end of the tip of their pike. The closer you get to the, the model, the individual models, the less damage they will do. It is maximum damage here, and it is minimum damage here. Now, minimum damage can be zero, such as with Fortabrachios, because they have such a long pike, or it can be just a little bit, particularly because pike militia do get a minimum damage increase, so they will do damage even right up next to the pikes. And that's why you can jam them all in and hit that one key and just evaporate a unit, whereas you couldn't do that with Fortabrachios. Just a small advantage here of the pike militia. Okay, this is my doctrine selection for pike militia. As you can see, it's actually very basic. I've got the penetration and the damage for piercing, I've got the piercing defense, and I've got an extra little bit of health. On top of that, we're getting additional uh, damage by 100 while bracing. There are other doctrines you can use on the pike militia, the purple ones, but we won't go into that because it's unlikely that most people will use them, especially not at a starter level. Here is a veterancy line that you must, and I mean must, use for pike militia. Uh, the two end ones increase the number of enemies a soldier can strike with a single attack by one. That means every time they give a little poke with their stick, they'll poke two people instead of one, assuming two people are in range. And the other one is bracing stuns units, which you would have experienced earlier in the video. That's when the, the, the unit takes a little hit, they'll sort of wobble around a bit and just take more damage. Some of the other interesting ones on this line is the column formation, which you also absolutely need. Critical value, piercing damage, piercing armor penetration, movement speed, brace weapon increases armor penetration by 30%, and increased brace weapon damage by 15%. So as you can see, this is an absolutely critical line for the pike militia. There are no other viable options for this unit. Just quickly as well, if you want to pause the video, this is the stats of my pike militia when they are fully leveled up and they've got their doctrines applied. So, what sort of units should you fight with your pike militia? Well, very simply, you can fight just about any unit in the game. You'll be better at some than others, but pike militia are the only peasant unit that will stay relevant through your entire career, from low level all the way through to the very high levels. You won't see them in territory wars or anything like that, but you will see them in random battles of all levels, because they can potentially fight every unit in the game. So their pikes, let's talk about cavalry first. Can they stop cavalry? Yes, they'll stop uh, blue tier, they'll stop green tier cavalry real nice and they'll kill them and clean them up. Once you start getting up to the purple tier, like the armor gelances or the super high cavalry, um, you'll do some very serious damage to the units, even if you get charged, especially something with the, the lighter armor gelances. Um, you'll probably lose your unit, but exchanging a, a green tier unit for a purple tier unit is not a bad thing. So be, feel free to do that. When we get onto the, the gold tier cavalry, the problem that you've got, especially with like the monastics and especially the hussars, is they have a very long reach with their lance. So this unit will not stop either of those. It will stop some of them because it has the stun mechanic, but the reality is they outreach you and they'll just plow straight through and kill your whole unit. 
the idea would be to, if you're like a longsword, pop an alt, um, stun the cavalry that are coming in, or a longbow, use an explosive arrow, musket, use your uh, caltrops. These are the sort of things that you want to do to support this unit to kill high tier cavalry. I wouldn't worry too much about something like Keshigs, their range is very short. Uh, they have hand weapons as opposed to long lances, and you'll do a lot more damage to that sort of unit. Uh, of course, you're still going to lose your, your pike militia unit. Don't think that they're going to take out uh, a tier 5 cavalry of any, any kind if you're being charged from the front. It's much better to uh, wait for their charge or move out of the way of their charge and come back in and drop with that one, use the one key and try and delete them past that. Uh, in terms of infantry, these can fight any infantry in the game. The ones you really want to be careful of are things with tower shields, imperial spear guard, that sort of thing, and uh, even down to domain spearmen. It's a problematic thing that you have to scratch away their shields before you can start damaging the unit. But you can use your hero to support yourself to do that. You can move them in, hit the one key, and then do an ability that will knock down their shields. The biggest threat to these in infantry is most certainly stalwarts. Uh, they have massive block from the front. Um, and they have that continuous double hit damage just like this unit does. Don't take stalwarts on in the front, always try and flank them. The other ones you've got to watch out for are units that can instant delete you, such as Celadars, who will press the one key and just evaporate your unit. Sure, you'll do a lot of damage to the Celadar unit uh, as well, which is probably the purpose, right? If you can get half of a, a Celadar unit with your Pike Militia, you've done your job well. From there, um, pretty much any other infantry in the game is fair game to these guys. Um, because they are a pike, if anything charges at you, such as Condottori Guard, Xerex, Azaps, anything like that, they'll take increased damage because the momentum of the unit charging towards you and the speed it is charging towards you at will increase your damage. So you will win against these units. Any unit you can flank, push in with your column formation and press 1, any unit will die in that circumstances. And that's what makes Pike Militia so darn powerful. They're an absolutely essential unit for all levels of play in random battles. Okay, so we've noticed that the enemy have pushed up the siege tower and we've called our Pike Militia to us. Now these men at arms will not want to charge us in the front because they will take additional damage from the momentum that they get from their charge into the pikes. And this guy's seen us reflanking him, but he's decided quite sensibly as you can see, that he doesn't want to fight me. Why? Because Pike Militia in the front in a tight formation like that would kill you. These shields we can't take on in the front, so we're going to move in, press 1, and watch how all these units get stunned and stun locked in the unit there, while we completely nibble them to death. Can't take them on in the front, those shields. Can take them on with the flank. We're going to move into these javelins, hit the 1 key, and just completely delete the entire unit of javelins. Very, very handy. Watch this hero going into the block of, of troops. Watch how quickly his health evaporates. That's from the pike militia. <laughs> very, very good. You never wander your hero into a unit of pikes. Here we go. We're going to try and chase down one of these heroes. Nobody in there needs our help, so we'll go and try and take this guy. He's been kidnapped by a maul. Can't say I approve, but that's what it, what's happening. And we notice more enemies are coming up the siege tower. Because our unit's only got 20 left, and most of them are very badly damaged, we want someone else to take the lead on this. And what we're going to do is, once they start fighting, we're going to try and block the exit back to the siege tower. Watch how we use our stun to keep them in place while they get killed. Slaughtered. Let's move them in, and when they're in position, hit the one key. Now we've been keeping an eye on all those cavalry down the bottom there. So we'd best go and do something about that if we can. Now, as soon as we get down the, the stairs here, by the way, pike militia fight very badly on stairs and ramps. All pikes do. So we're going to move them into the shield unit here, and watch how we use the, the ults of the heroes to take apart the, the shield wall before we move them in. So see all those damage numbers? Very good damage for pike militia. But of course, you can't just scratch at the face of a tower shield and hope that you're going to do damage to it. You must take down the tower shield before you can do effective damage. Um, something else you're going to see in a minute is Pike Militia placed at the top of stairs. And this was a bit of a mistake, this whole next play, uh, because pikes, they don't raise their pike up and they don't point their pike down. It's always on level ground that pikes fight best. So, especially against the tower shields you'll see, 
the tower shields remain up and we don't do a lot of damage to them, but also nobody is within reach of the pike because of the angle of the stairs. You cannot fight pike militia on ramps, stairs or siege towers. It just doesn't work. See how little damage we're doing here? And we're just getting picked off by the range behind. And splat. Boo hiss. Let's move on to something else. Right, so in this scenario, uh, the enemy have just made it into our walls, and I don't really want to get involved by attacking those with my hero, so I've called my pike militia to me, and we're going to block the gate with them. So, I'm going to go and have a quick peek outside, and see what's going on. You can see there's cavalry out there, so we're just being a little bit careful. It looks like there's too much ranged, too many enemies, and too many heroes out here. Watch what happens in the pike militia unit in front. To be expected. So there's no reason to rush them out there and get them killed. Always preserve your unit as a priority. Well not always. Sometimes you need to use the unit up. And watch how I just place them inside and put them in a little uh, block facing the door while we wait to see what's going on. And here come the enemies. Some behind, some in front. Who's going to be the first victims? Here they come. You can see where these pike militia of our friendly allies have been placed. That is wrong placement. They're too easy to destroy. They have low hit points and low armour. So always keep them off to the side like where he's got them now. And when, when the enemies start coming in, you can readjust your pike militia placement. You'll see that as those enemy serfs come in, they get destroyed. Peasants of any kind get utterly destroyed by pike militia. And once there's a few left, you can pile in your unit and kill them. Here come some um, peasant woodcutters. Woodcutters are great, they've got a shield, but they're still a peasant unit. Watch what happens when you pile them in and press the 1 key. Delete. Pile them in again, press the 1 key again. Delete. Pile them in again, press the 1 key delete. Then we bring them back inside. We try and take the opportunity for heal, but we see this, and we, instead of going in the front, we're going to try and flank them, because we don't want the same thing happening to us that's going to happen to them. Watch these halberdiers. Move it in, press the one key, delete. Move it in, press the one key, delete. You can kill entire units in a matter of just fractions of seconds with this uh, absolutely wonderful unit that is Pike Militia. So boys and girls, uh, that concludes my tutorial for Pike Militia. I hope you learned something new, or you just enjoyed a couple of the battles. And don't forget, I've got a creator code now on mydatgames.com. If you'd like to buy one of the new starter bundles, highly recommend them. The 9.99 one and the 19.99 one. You can only purchase them once because they are starter bundles, but they are the only way you can purchase silver. Also, get a lot of the cool stuff there for XP and things like that to level you up. Thanks for coming to the channel.